Hello and welcome to RickyJordan.com. Today we're going to continue on with our series of video posts on SolidWorks routing. So in part two here what we're going to do is take the assembly that we created in part one and continue on with it. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things with this. We're going to first off uh, make some adjustments to the 3D route and um, we're also going to add some wiring information inside of this 3D harness. Uh, remember earlier in part one we had uh, we had this little kink up here near the the 37 pin connector uh, that we need to take care of here so we're going to take care of that particularly and we're also going to move some of these wiring clips around uh, so that we can uh, get the the route adjusted to where uh, we're not interfering with uh, with other components inside of this assembly so let's get started so to start with here we're just going to select edit route which puts us in editing in context of our virtual subassembly. We're just going to grab that endpoint and just move it in here. You can hold down the control key if you're worried about snapping to entities on that 37 pin connector. And just hold it down while you're dragging. Um, you can see it's still a little, a little bit tight there so we're going to go to a top view. We're actually going to move this clip. Now one of the advantages of working in routing here is that uh, even though I'm in a 3D sketch, I can move components that are at the top level. These clips are all located at the top level assembly. They're not part of this hard uh, sub-assembly. So as you can see, I've got a much smoother route there. I'm going to go back to the top view and take a look at this area where I'm actually getting close to this DIN rail here. So I'll just move the clip over a little bit more here and you can see I, I'm, I'm free and clear of that edge of that DIN rail now. Alright so now let's go ahead and take a look at what it takes to manually uh, put some wires into this 3D harness. So what we did before is we created the, the, the paths, we laid the groundwork for the wires, we've got uh, uh, wires kind of running all over the place here so what we need to do is assign some wires uh, or first off load some wires in and then assign them uh, to, to the paths that we've created. So we're going to go into the routing assembly under electrical and uh, select edit, edit, uh, edit wires there. Now this particular, uh, as we hit add wires, you can, you'll see this electrical library that comes up. This is a wire library that I've created. It's got quite a few more entries than the versus the standard uh, wire library that's loaded with routing. I did this with uh, Microsoft Excel, just imported, imported them all uh, in an Excel table. Works really well. Uh, we'll cover some of that in a later post here. So what uh, I'm doing now is just going in and selecting some 22 gauge thin wires. The thin and thick just means a little bit different diameters of insulation. And I'm going to make sure I get in here and select uh, what I and looking at the paths, I need uh, ten different wires in here. So I'm just going to pick uh, one of each color for now, since I really don't know uh, a lot of information. This this will work. It'll uh, it'll come in and give us uh, uh, all the different colors where we can differentiate the paths a little easier. So we've got them all in there. We're going to go ahead and select OK, and you'll notice right off the bat that we've got the dreaded yellow triangle here. Uh, go to what's wrong, you're going to see that it says the wire is not routed. Well, of course it isn't. I really I added the wires into uh, the route, but I haven't given any information about path. So we click the first entry, select and hit select path. And this first wire is going to run. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just have it run from the db 9 uh, all the way out to this first branch of the terminal block assembly. So I picked the first the first uh, trunk there and then the second and then you'll see that that wire when I move to the next wire is going to take that particular part of the route and set the diameter and the color based on the it had in the wire library so we'll pick this trunk again except this time we're going to branch out to the second terminal block and again as I move to the next route you'll see that um, that the the information on the screen updates now this this particular trunk here you're going to notice when we go and add the third one here is going to grow a little bit so routing does a pretty good job of representing the bundles and, uh, and the diameter it would take to bundle all three of those wires into that route so we're going to come over to second DB9 now and pick this uh, path all the way up to where it branches off here 
uh, that's where it says to select the first path, go into that first terminal block. So it's a pretty intelligent selection here. Uh, you'll notice when I get to the last one here, um, there's actually two segments here, but since there's no other branches, it knows to go all the way uh, as far as it can with that segment. So we pick just one entity in there, and, and it adds that gray wire all the way, all the way out. So again, we got two more uh, branches in this terminal block to go. There's the orange wire, and again, if you watch on the screen, you'll notice that these bundle diameters are growing every time we add wires to them. So now we've got a red wire that we're going to run from the third DB9 over to the 37 pin connector on the opposite end of the enclosure. So, and since there's no other branches, basically I can come in and pick that route, just one segment that goes all the way to the end there. So I got two wires left, I got a white one and a yellow one, and what I need to do is is get at least one wire through each of these branches that I or, or paths that I created uh, for these two DB9s to have wires that route back to that 37 pin connector. So to start with here I'm going to take a white wire and go from this segment uh, through this path and over to the 37 pin path. And you see graphically we get the update and then the final yellow wire to run from the second DB9 connector through this path and over all the way out to the 37 pin connector. So now you can see in the property manager here we've got um, no more warnings, that's good. And uh, if I move the bar over a little bit here you're going to notice that I do have some cut lengths. So those are already posted in there. All I had to do is just tell, tell routing which path to route each wire. A lot of other various pieces of information in here. Uh, component references, pin numbers you can fill in manually. Um, more on that uh, in, a, in a little bit later on post. You hit more properties, it pulls up a really nice table which shows the, the routed length versus the cutting length. Now the difference there is that each connector has a connection point uh, that, that need to be there in order to, uh, to use that connector in routing. The terminal blocks and the connectors in this assembly had them. So that covers the amount of wire that runs inside of that terminal block or that cable, uh, I'm sorry, that connector. So it could be, uh, in most case connectors, it's going to be uh, contacts, crimp contacts, where the wire actually runs inside of the connector some there. So anyway, um, one nice thing is uh, you really can't export that list. Uh, you can get that list to pop up uh, if you create a drawing uh, of this harness and, and insert an electrical table, but uh, but it'd be nice if there was an export button there. So we'll go ahead and close out of this and uh, you can see the, the 3D route is, is now complete. All the adjustments made. Uh, it's looking good. So that's all for this particular portion. Um, the next post, uh, part three, is going to cover using from two lists. So a little bit more automation, uh, a little bit more setup up front. So and then, thanks for joining us today. Stay tuned. Come.